This is the Ellis Martin Report. Join Ellis now for a conversation with Ali Haji, the CEO of Ion Energy, trading in the U.S. on the OTC as IONGF and on the TSX Venture Exchange as ION. Ion Energy is committed to exploring and developing Mongolia's lithium salars, which includes the Babaul and Ergenaron project. ION's flagship 81,000 hectare Babaul lithium brine project represents the largest and first lithium brine exploration license awarded in Mongolia. Ion Energy is well poised to be a key player in the clean energy revolution, positioned well to service the world's increased demand for lithium. Ali, welcome back to the program. It's great to speak with you again. Always a pleasure, Ali. I understand you took a site visit to Mongolia, all the way over there, and you're going to give us an update on the Ergok Naran exploration activity there with the lithium project. Yeah, absolutely. I think for our listeners, a quick recap. We went out to Ergok Naran earlier this year with our team that included Don Haynes and Dr. Mark King, ex-Neo Lithium, ex-Lithium Americas, and current Albemarle individuals. And we were able to, to conduct an exploration program at Urgat Naran, which is a 29,000 hectare license in Dorn Govi province. And that program consisted of auger holes that went down to about 12 meters or basement or end of the water table plus two meters. But in addition to that, we had a TEM geophysics program that we conducted over the course of the summer. That program allowed us to see a massive or rather significant, I should say, volume of brine beneath surface at a cutoff of about six and a half ohm with a 22.7 billion cubic meter volume. So very exciting stuff with respect to scale. We had to then devise a program that would allow us to drill not only lithological holes using diamond core, but importantly using a six inch tricone bit going down to the same depth as the lithological holes to get a better sense of the brine aquifers beneath surface. So you're absolutely right. I was on site. I was there about three weeks ago. I was there to oversee the drilling program. We've now completed two holes from a diamond perspective, one hole from a water well perspective. We continue to press on with an additional two holes from a diamond perspective, and of course, two and a half more holes from a water well perspective. I think it's very important for our listeners to go to your website, ionenergy.ca, and take a look at the latest news release to see photographs, actually, of the drilling and the drill location map, and also an overview of the area. Whether you understand completely the science that's going on, you can see the scope of the project by just looking at that news release. You're absolutely right, and thank you for that, Alice. I think what's important for our listeners to take away from this is we've drilled now two lithological holes, as I mentioned, using diamond core drilling down to about 702 meters in total. We've been able to extrapolate areas that are very porous and permeable in nature. Importantly, we've found cumulative 80 meters worth of gravelite porous permeable material. This is very similar to what you can expect to find in Argentina, Chile, or Bolivia in the lithium triangle. Our permeability begins at about 185 meters below surface. The vast majority of assets around the world today that are sort of uh, in the exploration phase may start a fair bit deeper. But what we're doing to better understand our assets and come up with an inferred resource before the end of the year is Don Haynes, my geologist, will be in Mongolia in the coming weeks here, the, the purpose of which would be to oversee that drilling program, bail out the holes using a pumping system, use a baler system to obtain brine samples at depth, understanding grades at various depths, along with conductivity as well as grade. Once we do have that grade in place, the goal for the company would be use that average grade against the volume identified in previous press releases to come up with an inferred resource for our asset. So we're moving quite quickly. It is rather exciting, specifically because we've had high grade of up to 918 milligrams per meter on surface. But beyond that, of course, these uh, permeable zones that we're seeing beneath surface that are extremely encouraging that will require additional assaying before we can put out that inferred resource. Did I hear you correctly when you said you will have an inferred resource report by the end of this year? That's just two months from now? Absolutely. So that's the goal of the company. That's our target. We're moving in a pace that would be, for lack of a better word, word, and to quote myself on the last press release, breakneck in terms of speed, we continue to execute on our promises, and having Dawn over there next week will allow us to advance toward that quite quickly as well. So that's the goal for the company. We will continue to execute on that premise, and we look forward to sharing that update with the market as and when it's available. Well, I'm very excited to hear this, of course, and one thing I should mention is that compared to other junior lithium projects in the space, yours evidently is quite advanced, and you're in an area where there's a great deal of offtake opportunity. 
close by. You couldn't have said it better, Alice. And I think you're absolutely right. Looking at our location geographically, we're located between 23 and 150 kilometers from the largest consumer on the planet. The vast majority of the junior miners out there are located either in the lithium triangle or elsewhere in the world called, you know, some of the deposits in the Americas as well in North America. Those are junior in their current stage, but they do have the advantage of having two different advantages. One, the fact that they were able to advance their assets over the course of the pandemic using a skill set that existed in country. Mongolia did not have that. We just recently got access to country. And the second being the fact that there is a proximity play advantage. So if somebody or your neighbor has found lithium, ultimately your valuation will be inflated as a result of perhaps you finding something that would be of commercial viability. In our case, we did two things to sort of alleviate that. One is we built a team of industry recognized experts well before we visited or acquired sites. Uh, They have now been to site as of April and we're accelerating our exploration program on the basis that we are funded. So we're not out here looking for capital. We're out here telling our story. We're out here telling the world that we are in fact drilling based on best practices used around the world for lithium exploration. And what we're seeing today is highly encouraging. So while we may be first movers in Mongolia and we may be 18 to 24 months behind various juniors around the world, given they had the opportunity to advance their assets through the pandemic, we're on the cusp now of uh, truly de-risking and understanding our assets at a level that would rival in our belief number of juniors that are currently exploring around the world. And you're trading at about 16 cents Canadian, which is about 12 US. I think there's a potentially a fantastic opportunity for upside in here. We can't make any promises. We can't really predict anything, but it looks very, very good. And you've got a very nice share structure. Review that for us, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we're trading at a massive discount. A lot of our peers are also trading at a massive discount. So that's not a value proposition that I would like to put out there. What I would like to talk about is the fact that we are, in fact, executing on our promises. Our proximity to market is unbeatable relative to a number of our peers around the world. We continue to execute on our promises with respect to exploration. And of course, we've had some analyst reports, including Zach's small cap research as of last week, putting us at a price of 42 cents. So, you know, a 3x premium relative to where we're trading today. I'm not going to say that's unheard of, but it is in fact very rare to see that you get a 3x premium to your current share price. We believe that as we continue to execute and we continue to follow through on our promises to the market, we will start to see that re-rate here in due course. Of course, the economy that we are in is one of a lot of uncertainty, but as far as the assets that we control and the team that we've established, we're very confident that we will start to deliver on something that may puts the lithium supply chain on its head with respect to where we are operating today. And Ali, one more time, how many shares? 60.5 million shares today, a very small sort of uh, cap table, 25% in the hands of management and insiders. We have a number of shares in the hands of institutions that have come in on either a placement historically or have acquired on market. For our listeners and our viewers, the last bought deal was done at 50 cents a unit. We're currently trading at 12, as Ellis highlighted. And so we're trading at a massive discount to that, and nobody in that strategic or institutional space has exited. I continue to have conversations with them, and they're holding on because they see value in what we're doing. I think it's a matter of time until we start to see that inflection point whereby we have shown that there is an inferred resource that is qualifies from a 43-101 perspective to show ultimate value for us. Looks like a fantastic potential opportunity for individuals looking for a long-term play right now in a space that everyone is taking a close look at. Ali Haji, thank you so much for joining me today in the program. I look forward to an update very soon. Thank you, Ellis. Always a pleasure. Ellis has been speaking with Ali Haji, CEO of Ion Energy, trading in the U.S. on the OTC as IONGF and on the TSX Venture Exchange as ION. Learn more. Head to the company's website, ionenergy.ca. That's ionenergy.ca. This is the Ellis Martin Report.